I feel like the three product categories that most people care about are AI, AR, and vehicles. Yep. And you guys are like fundamental to every single category. Right. Is there a certain category that's like most exciting to you or that we're gonna see like the most innovation in? This is Don McGuire. He's the CMO of Snapdragon, the company that makes a chipset for almost every premium smartphone on the planet. I've just spent the last week hearing about everything that they have to come, and I had a few questions for him, like how do we navigate also being present like in our real life, and I heard about his ideas on accessibility. People say technology is a great equalizer, and it's yeah. really not. It's access to technology. That's so the great true. equalizer. Thank you so much. Like genuinely so stoked to be doing this. Yeah, no, so am I. This is awesome. And I'm stoked that she used the word stoked. <laughs> because I use the word stoked. Do you? Yeah. I know, it just has more of like an emotional value yeah, to it yeah, than excited. Yeah. Exactly. I agree. All right, less, we're aligned. Less boring. <laughs> Love it. Um, okay, so obviously we're Hawaii, but I feel like everyone knows Snapdragon for all the incredible innovation that you guys do in smartphones, more recently in vehicles. Right. Can you kind of give like the history, the lay of the land of what we're doing in Hawaii right now, what Snapdragon Summit is? Sure. Over here. Um, so yeah, awesome to be back in Maui, Snapdragon Summit, uh, as you can see behind us. This is literally like our premier event uh, where we, we launch into the world our, our new next generation. Um, Snapdragon platforms. And it started out with our mobile platform and it, and it still is sort of the centerpiece, especially of day one, yeah. is what is that next generation Snapdragon platform that's going to ignite the smartphone ecosystem and really bring those next level experiences to smartphones all over the world. Since we've been diversifying the Snapdragon product portfolio into more product categories, we've added in things like compute and XR, automotive and wearables. Um, and, and we've talked about new platforms and new announcements or news around those product categories. And that's usually around day two. So that's today. That's today. That's today. So you're yeah. going to hear a lot about XR today. And then over the course of, of the next 12 months, seeing devices come to market, yeah. right? For, with, with Snapdragon inside of them from all these amazing brands, it's sort of the payoff. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because there's so many people here. Like normally at these tech events, it's like just tech YouTubers. But at this yeah. event, there's like analysts, there's people that like on, are on the OEM side, right. and then also you have insiders, yep. which is Snapdragon's community, where like I feel like it's like enthusiast fans yeah. that then get to experience the amazingness yeah. of being here. Yeah. And also, you were the one that started like the entire event, and you brought the energy. Like I feel like you really set the tone for it to be a good event. Well, aloha, everybody. Welcome to Snapdragon Summit 2022. Yeah, thank you. It was it was fun. It's fun, it's fun to kick it off every year. What do you think about like when you're hosting? Like, are there things that like you think about before you go on stage? Uh, don't mess up. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, but no, it's you know it's uh, because it's um, it's a this event is is so near and dear to our hearts, mm -hmm. and it's again it's so important um, to to our core product portfolio, which is Snapdragon. Um, you know, it, it's really all about, you know, kicking out off right and how we're bringing Snapdragon to market and the conversation that we're having because we can't just sort of rep be repetitive. Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of come up with new ways to express yourself and you have to talk about things in new ways and bring new things to the table. Snapdragon is becoming so multidimensional, yeah. right? Not just the portfolio, which I mentioned is expanding, yeah. but the brand totally. itself. And so you saw a little bit more injection of brand yesterday than we've ever had here. Yeah. I feel like um, you guys are focusing great. more on being like consumer facing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And obviously with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, that trip is going to enable so many different things. Yeah. Um, and you guys are also really involved. Like, I feel like the three product categories that most people care about are AI, AR, and vehicles. Yep. And you guys are like fundamental to every single category. Right. Is there a certain category that's like most exciting to you or that we're going to see like the most innovation in? Well, I think, I mean, AI kind of stretches out across the platform. Yeah. So AI is sort of this thread. Um, and so I'm excited about what AI can do to bring experiences to the next level. Mm -hmm. And again, I think AI for some people is kind of scary, but yeah. it's not like robots that are going to take over the world, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's really about the, the little enhancements that it can bring to your camera experience or, you know, or your, or natural language processing. I, we saw yesterday natural language processing happening in real time across five languages. Like yeah. imagine how that can make the world a better place. People can understand each other better, right? Because they can be talking into their phone to somebody who speaks a completely different language, but understand them. Um, so that's the power of AI is those types of things. So AI is a thread. And really, if you look at um, the XR space or extended reality, um, which is virtual, mixed, and augmented, we believe that that really augmented reality is what's going to scale mm. and what's going to be more mainstream and pervasive agree, in absolutely. consumers' lives, right? So, you know, you can think five, whatever, three, five, whatever years from now, people are walking down the street, they throw on a pair of cool glasses, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they augment their, their world. They, mm -hmm. they want information about their surroundings, their environment. 
they want to know if there's a restaurant nearby that's yeah. got good tacos or whatever, yeah. you know, and like they throw on the glasses. Like they want they direction. They're lost, yeah. right? Or there's someone, you know, they're meeting someone for the first time and they want to just know a little bit about them. Ooh, so they throw okay. on their glasses. The LinkedIn profile pops up and they're like, oh, I didn't know you worked here. Yeah. So it's just that kind of stuff. And I think augmented reality has this has this potential to be that, that pervasive thing. And then, yes, there's gaming, obviously. Yeah. And then there's kind of diving into a world. There's mental uh, mental health applications for virtual reality. I've used one um, from a little company. Well, it's a little company that actually, you put on the, the, the headset, an Oculus, okay. or sorry, a Meta Quest. Okay. Um, and you it asks you what kind of mood you're in. And um, are you anxious? Are you sad? Mm -hmm. um, are you excited? Okay. Um, and then uh, it will customize a seven minute experience for you to really? help you know, sort of reshape your mood. That's um, so cool. it's, it's very cool. Um, and then, so if you're anxious, it will calm, you know, help calm you down. What does it show you? Uh, it like shows you images and there's a really soothing voice and no, and then it has you play some little games, oh, which are really interesting. Like the butterflies are flying at you, okay. and, you know, capture the butterfly. And it's, it, but it's, you know, you're sitting there and you're just like, you feel so calm and just everything releases. And yeah. so I think that there's lots of applications like that. I feel like the main question that always comes up with AR is like, how do we navigate also being present like in our real life? Yeah. And like, how do you kind of see it complementing people's lives? Because I think AR, it's easier to complement than VR where like you're yeah. fully not immersed in the real world. Yeah. Um, how do you kind of think about that like from a personal level? Yeah, I mean, AR is, is enhancing. Yeah. Um, VR is escaping, uh -huh. um, right? I mean, yeah. it's good escape, yeah. right? But um, but you know, I think that's the key difference. You know, AR is going to be more practical from a, the devices can be smaller and lighter. And you don't need as much compute power. Sure. You can offload compute power between devices. So you can actually have a pair of glasses that look like they're fashionable and like mm -hmm. you should, you're just wearing them, whether they're sunglasses or regular glasses, yeah. but have these additional capabilities. With VR, just, you need so much compute power that you're, you're, you know, it's, it's gonna be a really long time, if at all, where you get away from the big like headset yeah. thing, you know, where you kind of look super weird and you're kind of fumbling around in the dark. So I think that's why I think AR has more um, potential. I agree with you. Um, you know, to scale. And what about um, with Snapdragon Gen 2, where there's also a lot of AI stuff in terms of like mm -hmm. computational photography, yeah. and even in like games, like the real-time reflection thing yeah. is genuinely sick. Like yeah, that's yeah, yeah. wild. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. And how do you kind of look at what Snapdragon Gen 2 is gonna do across like the industry as a whole? Well, I mean, it's all about bringing next level experiences. And you know, it wasn't too long ago where we would just talk about the technology itself, mm -hmm. right? Hey, performance is amazing. Look at our charts, look at our graphs. Yeah. Woo, we're going up, everyone else going down. Which we still showed a little bit of that yesterday, yeah. but because you know we can't get valid. away from it. Yeah, you know, how are you not going a ton to of it? engineers in this company; they'll be super pissed if we didn't do that. But but then it immediately shifts. The conversation shifts to, well, what is that really going to do for to, for me? And the whole new expression of Snapdragon, which you saw a little bit of here with all mm -hmm. the new colors and the photography style, is really about the power to move, and it's the power to move you mm -hmm. um, and to wherever you want to go. And it's the feeling that you get from the experiences that you have that okay. our technology enables, yeah. that's the most important thing. It's not the technology itself, yeah. it's not the speeds and feeds, it's about the feeling that you get from the experience that you're having yeah. with that technology. So the computational photography, what is that doing for me, right? Yeah. It's enabled me to, to do these things, right? Right. The real-time reflection, I'm better gameplay, yeah. right? So what is, the, what is the feeling I'm getting? That was sort of the main point of yesterday, it was like, hey, there's all these experience pillars, how they're getting better with HN2, how we're once again setting the bar for the industry. People say technology is a great equalizer, and it's yeah. really not. It's access to technology. That's so the great true. equalizer. Such right? a good That's how you That's get so rid of true. inequities yeah. in life is people having access. And um, we have a long way to go mm -hmm. to make sure that happens. But an example of where we're pushing that is in esports. Mm -hmm. Right with Snapdragon yeah. Pro Series, right? Yeah, yeah. Mobile esports is the most democratized form of esports. So it's, it's not 95% male, right? It's yeah. not. It's not. Can I afford a huge rig yeah. that I custom can build? In the world. Can do it from anywhere in the world. It's on your phone, um, and you can really go from zero to hero. Yeah. And that's why we we call it enabling the era of everyone. And mobile esports, mo mobile gaming is 50/50 male female. Yeah, which right? is actually it's, really exciting. Yeah, it starts out inclusive. Yes. Right, you don't have to work to make it more inclusive. The rest of the gaming ecosystem, yeah. PC, console, is working really hard to make it more inclusive. Yeah, whereas mobile from day one, it's already. It's already. That's and amazing. And so that's a great place to start from. Yeah. So super stoked on Snapdragon Pro Series. I feel like one of the things that you and I have in common is um, both of our jobs like require us to take like really complex tech topics and then kind of simplify it for consumers yeah. to like, what actually matters. Right. How do you kind of think about doing that? Because I think you have the interesting challenge of like still talking to analysts and um, industry experts, but then also trying to make Snapdragon like a more consumer facing brand. Yeah, it's, this is a great question because this conversation I have with our 
leadership at Qualcomm all the okay. time because you know there are a lot of engineers at this company yeah. and they want to say they want to stuff 20 pounds of stuff into a two pound bag yeah. right and, like, and yeah. you can't do that so i what i've been trying to tell people and when we're making lots of progress on is you cannot explain snapdragon in a 15 second ad yeah. You cannot explain it in a 30 second ad. You cannot explain it in a 60 second yeah. ad. Okay. All you can do is connect with your audience to say, that looks cool, I wanna know more, mm. right? What is Snapdragon? So from the outmost marketing yeah. you know, to the broadest audience that we're marketing to for Snapdragon, the action I want people to take is, I want to know more. Yeah. What is Snapdragon? You know, managing all of our key stakeholders. Yeah. They want us, oh no, but we have to talk about this, and we have to talk about yeah. that. And it's just, it doesn't work, right? Because you end up with nothing, and then people don't understand yeah, it. Yeah, when you try to appeal to everyone, you end up appealing to like literally zero people. To literally zero yeah. people. So it's really about making this connection. You saw a little bit of that visually this week, yesterday, yeah. in the new color palette, the, the way we're approaching photography, we're, we're showing people in the moment, yeah. experiencing stuff. Yeah, is there a device there somewhere? Sure, There's, there might be headphones, yeah. there might be a watch, but you're it's looking at the, the feeling, person going, yeah. they're having a great time. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And then the Snapdragon brand's there, so somehow Snapdragon it's is like, associated with people having a really good time. Yeah. Like, what does that mean? And so, and then you take them on that journey. Once you understand it, that it's this little chip that fits on your pinky, yeah. and it creates all this goodness, it's is pretty mind blowing. Um, and that is really the, you know, the heart and soul of all these amazing people back in San Diego and around the world that are, that are really inventing this stuff, right? And it's mind blowing, because I'm not an engineer and I'm yeah. not an inventor, I, but I get to talk about it and I get to take all the good work that they do every day, translate it into something that then the rest of the world can understand. That's a pretty cool gig. Yeah, I feel like I never want like to get to a place of technology and I feel like this happens often where people just like expect the innovation right. and they're not excited about it. Like it's wild how every year, like it's never really iterative, especially this year, you guys have come up with so many things across yeah. all the different categories. If you had to pick like one announcement, What's like the thing you're most excited about, either from like a, this is gonna change your life perspective or just like, this is gonna be easy to market perspective? <laughs> um, uh, I think over the, over the two days, um, I think, well, let me, let me take it from a mobile platform perspective. Okay. So for HN2, um, what I'm really excited about is, um, I'm excited about the improvements in camera. Um, uh, which I think is amazing with computational photography and yeah. some of the secure camera features, yeah. like getting rid of people, and that's crazy. locking when your it, like, screen it if you want people to see it. Yeah. That's a really cool feature. So yeah. basically, like, just to give some context, yeah, if, if someone else is in the, um, like looking at your phone screen, yeah. the camera will detect it and then it will put on do not disturb, yeah. which I feel like can save people from so many awkward moments. Uh, totally. Like right. life changing experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, people, you know, walk by over your shoulder yeah. and you're like, you don't want people to see what you're doing. So, totally. so that, that's, that's super cool. And then in general, I think our announcement today around augmented reality and our yeah. new AR platform is, is going to be super cool. Yeah, so yeah. exciting. Thank you so much so, for your time, for yeah, having me at the summit, me. and like for everything you guys are doing. I really yeah. genuinely feel like Snapdragon is one of the companies that's like fundamentally changing the world in a million different product categories. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yes. Appreciate you. you. Amazing. You're like so articulate. That was amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Just have it down. Okay, this was actually such a fun conversation to have, and it was so like fulfilling too. And there was actually a lot of stuff that we talked about that I didn't put in this video that I think is really interesting, but the YouTube algorithm probably wouldn't be receptive to it. Do I need to send that person up the telephone pole to check out what's going on? Or can I send <laughs> yeah. a drone up? So I think that's a longer kind of term type of experience that people will really enjoy. And it, we are not far away from that actually being you know, a mainstay. So I just actually posted an extended cut of this video to Nebula, which is a streaming service that I'm building with a bunch of my other content creator friends. And the best way to get access to Nebula is through this bundle that we have with CuriosityStream, one of my favorite independent streaming platforms. CuriosityStream has like educational and informative and entertaining content. I'm watching a series right now called Oddly Satisfying Science, which is incredible. I love it. And there are thousands of other pieces of content on CuriosityStream. And if you use my link, you get like this 26% off discount where you can get access to CuriosityStream and Nebula for less than $15 a year. But actually, if you're watching this before January 2nd, they're running a 42% discount right now. So it's a really, really good deal. I'll leave a link in the description down below, or you can go to curiositystream.com backslash NBT. Thank you so much for watching this video and for supporting everything that I do. I appreciate you guys so much, and I'll see you next week.